99 Hustles. 99 Hustles. 99 Hustles. Welcome to the 99 Hustles podcast. I'm your host, Nick Carter. And I'm your co-host, International Fees. And today we're brought with a uh, very special guest. Uh, today we have Doug Cunnington. Doug, thanks for being on the show. It's my pleasure. I am uh, pumped to get into affiliate marketing and hang out with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, for, yeah, for sure. Uh, so Doug uh, is the owner of um, Niche Site Project. You pronounce it niche or niche. You know, that's an ongoing. <laughs> yeah, I, I say niche. I'm a, you say you niche. Know, okay. Yeah, kind of a rough around the edges of America. <laughs> so yeah. I know <laughs> it's probably not quite right. But yeah, I, I'm digging in and just saying niche niche okay gotcha like, he's it's like target or target right Depending <laughs> he's That's the right. founder of uh niche site project.com uh where he is is a lot of experience and expertise in amazon affiliate marketing uh what doug does is he sets up people um with stores uh that has affiliate links in from amazon products and he's going to get into that with us today just to show us how to make money with Amazon. So Doug, uh, as we said, thanks for being on the show, man. If you could tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and how you got started uh, with uh, affiliate marketing for Amazon. Sure. So right now I blog over at Niche Site Project and I have a podcast and YouTube channel where I talk about SEO and affiliate marketing and all that sort of thing. But I came in sideways like a lot of people. So I had a, a corporate background went to uh, Georgia Tech and got an engineering degree, ended up in management consulting and kind of the grind, you know, going up the corporate ladder and thinking that was the answer. Yeah, I actually didn't even realize I didn't like my job until um, much later, but it was a rough travel schedule mm -hmm. and just projects that were no fun to work on. And then in 2013, I accidentally found the Smart Passive Income podcast, which is kind of a, a gateway drug podcast for a lot of people into entrepreneurship, side hustles and all that stuff. And I had no real interest in it beforehand. <laughs> I know some, some folks, like they always uh, were looking to start their own thing. And I, I was just content with that nine to five gig, which a lot of times, you know, you're putting in 12 hour days yeah. right, again, stuff like that. But I got into affiliate marketing and started a site pretty quickly, which was a flop. It was, I did everything wrong in the <laughs> book, you know, tons of mistakes, but I brushed off the dirt, got started again and got some traction with Amazon affiliate marketing, which has been sort of my bread and butter for a few years. And then back in 2015, so a couple of years with the side hustle stuff going on, I got laid off. And at that point I had a perfect opportunity to give it a shot, see if I could do this stuff full time. And luckily my wife gave me the blessing. <laughs> so I was able to give it a shot. And here we are, you know, five, six years later. And I love working for myself. You, you always need that cosigner. <laughs> oh yeah. Super important. No. So, which is, so that's interesting. So with, was the career you were on uh, where you were comfortable at, was that in the digital space or is this com a complete culture shift altogether? Complete, complete shift. So it was in, you know, telecom for tier one companies. I worked at uh, Accenture for a little while in another company called Amdocs. Both are fine companies. I enjoyed working there, smart people, um, <laughs> actually a lot smarter than me because I was kind of a <laughs> middle, middle of the road average yeah, yeah, achiever. Yeah. So I know you know, a lot of my friends, you were an entrepreneur. Were, yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to be the smartest person in the room. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So yeah, completely different. And it was kind of, you know, these dinosaur industries of telecom, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the big companies that you, you probably have a cell phone playing with. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Got it. So um, like to build off of that though, do you find that the skills translate at all? Like um, you do have a, you, you, you have a PMP, correct? No, yep, that's that, right. You do have a PMP. Do you, do, you, do you find that the skills from corporate America, from your PMP, um, those project management skills lend themselves to, to, to you being an entrepreneur? Yeah, tr tremendously, but it's kind of in an indirect way. I know a lot of people, they, they get into internet marketing and 
you know, maybe some of these side hustle gigs because actually I'm, I'm not sure. Cause I don't fit into that camp, mm-hmm. but maybe they come yeah, into yeah, yeah. it because they, they don't work well with others so much or they want to do their own thing. But I was very much, um, you know, in, in the little worker bee mentality and I followed all the directions yeah. along the way you learn, especially at the big consulting companies, like methodology, don't recreate the wheel, use templates. Like mm-hmm. these are projects, continuous improvement, layer on project management and I can hire people. I can onboard them. I could do all this cool stuff that I learned on the job. I got paid really good to learn all that. And when I come into, uh, you know, maybe a smaller organization or one or two people working together, they've never hired anybody. I've, I've like interviewed and onboarded hundreds of people. And it's like in slow motion, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's well, a lot of mistakes and yeah. a lot of, a lot yeah. of issues that people yeah, have. Yeah. And I mean, I still make mistakes, but mm-hmm. I've worked out some of those um, kinks. So the skills, like if you, if you would have told me, Hey, these are going to come in really handy. Or if you tell someone, Hey, you need to maybe work a corporate job for five years and hate it, but mm-hmm. you're going to learn all this great stuff while you're getting paid. It's kind of, it's a tough pill to swallow but at the end of the day i'm like yeah i got a pmp i could come in set up a big team and it's not that big of a deal yeah so, so it's actually funny you say that because um personally like nick and i kind of follow like a similar path right where we kind of went down the traditional sense of like going to school getting educated finding like a you know a nice corporate job and and coming across all this like methodology that like at the time we didn't realize just how important this is and now that we've kind of taken this journey off into like learning about all these different side hustles and and being involved in some of them a lot of this stuff translates right so it's it's real interesting that you say that because i think sometimes people like you mentioned when you're you know maybe they don't get along with other people they don't get along with coworkers, so they think oh i should be an entrepreneur it's like yeah but that that's cool but can you actually apply things can you can you actually create some sort of structure to this because yeah you're going to need Schedule. methodology yeah you're going to yeah. need methodology regardless of whatever hustle you choose for sure for sure for sure um so doug for for the as far as the affiliate marketing um kind of a little bit in the intro like i, I kind of like butchered over it a little bit if you could like really explain in your words as somebody who's a professional affiliate marketer what affiliate marketing is um and how that applies to, to amazon as well Sure. So people can first, we'll describe it sort of like offline. It's the classic referral model where you can refer someone to a business and then you would get sort of like a finder's fee or something like that. So kind of a classic business model and in the digital world for affiliate marketing, and we'll be very specific and talk about Amazon because the Amazon associate program is one of the easiest ways to get started just because Amazon is you know, the biggest online retailer in the US. And basically I have some websites where I have product reviews and or how-to articles where I will have a link that goes to Amazon and it has like a special tracking code. If someone lands on my site, follows that affiliate link, they go to Amazon and purchase something, I will get a small commission. So it's anywhere from say one to 10%, which is a small amount of course, but Amazon sells a huge volume of products. So it works out well at volume. So that's the basic business model. So, so me as a consumer, I I guess what I'm understanding you're saying is if, if I do a Google search for like, I don't know, best flat screen TVs, one of your sites might pop up and it's like a review site or it's like, it's it's like, it's talking about TVs. um, And then person clicks a link, it goes to Amazon to where they actually buy the TV. And when they buy from Amazon, you get paid. Is, is that correct? Yep, that's that's exactly right. In the idea here, right? Because if you follow it in the most literal sense, it's like, why wouldn't someone just go to Amazon? Well, <laughs> yeah. if you go to Amazon and you look for flat screen TV, you may see, I don't know, 40,000 options and you're not really sure. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. <laughs> if, is this like a three-year-old TV? Is this a good one? Is it a bad one? It's filled with fake reviews. This is a big problem nowadays. So if you go and read reviews, it's like the person got the thing for free. You can't tell <laughs> if they really <laughs> reviewed it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, all, it's all very, um, there needs to be improvements. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. But you may want a curated list and you may realize that there's value in going to 
a website that has reviews where you could look at the top five for this year and kind of understand, all right, um, like a refresh rate is important to me. Maybe some sort of resolution is I, I'm not in the market for a TV, so I don't know all the stuff. Yeah, you're yeah, for, yeah, I got but you. I got you. Yeah. So basically there's value in curating a list and providing someone with uh, fewer choices, big value in that. No, it, that makes a lot of sense. And, and to kind of personalize it for, even for us, when Nick and I were, you know, thinking about, you know, for season two, what, what upgrades we needed. One big thing was like, we needed new cameras. And yeah. webcams. And <laughs> yeah. First thing I did was, you know, top webcams for a podcast. And lo and behold, I came to a, a blog or, and where they broke down all the different ones. And I went across a couple of them. And I guess the, the, you know, reason why this works is that because, I felt comfortable after reading a few blogs that, you know, this, this is the right camera based off of, you know, the explanation and things like that. So um, it, it, it makes, it's almost like if a friend tells you about some, uh, an item, you're more likely to buy it than yeah. just a random yeah. find on Amazon. That's exactly what it is. Yep. And to kind of layer on top of that, I mentioned informational and how to stuff as well. So let's say we'll stick with a TV example you're looking something up about how to mount a TV. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. Do I need to put it in studs? What kind of materials do I need? So you could describe the process. It's literally a how-to informational article that can help someone. And my advice for people, if you can help someone do something cheaper or faster or easier, like you should recommend the products that they need. So you can put affiliate links and how-to or informational content and be super helpful. So you can link to drills or screws or whatever mm. kind of other stuff you need for that kind of how-to article. Makes a lot of sense, man. So now, and, go ahead, Nick. Sorry. Now, I, I, I was just worried because I was just about to ask about the percentages a little bit more because you mentioned you, you get it's like one tenth of a percent or something off of every sale. So like if you so if you know let's, let's stick with TVs for example if a TV is like thousand five hundred dollars that someone buys on Amazon after going to your blog like how much money would you see from like that purchase sure so I, I talked or I spoke too quickly so it was one to ten percent so okay it's it could be one percent or it could be ten percent depending a lot, on yeah it's a lot more lucrative I, Nick yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got you <laughs> all right yeah. that's a game changer <laughs> it's, it's, it's I, like, a I, don't think, I don't think he's collecting pennies for, for yeah feedback. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well I mean I know if you sell high ticket items sometimes affiliate that's you know, true you know that's true. I mean? sure now yeah now how did you, it, go ahead Oh, and I was just going to say that in the U.S., so it's one to ten percent, but there are I think there's 19 different affiliate um, programs for Amazon. So one of them uh, that just opened up in I think the Netherlands is paying mm. around 10 percent. I'm sure they have a different breakdown, but um, I interviewed someone just the other day and he started a site not too long ago. He's pulling in roughly 10 K and it's mostly through non Amazon through the bigger online retailers in his country. And he's been publishing in uh, Dutch and German. So, you know, if you have the mm. awesome skill of more languages than, you know, just English, I just speak English, but you can go to different countries and potentially earn more. Amazon's just getting started in some places. You could work with other brands. So it's not just Amazon. There are, you know, Best Buy has a program. Walmart has a program. So you could work with many different companies. Okay. Um, now, okay. When, so to kind of go back a little bit. So, you know, you, you had your, your corporate gig and then you started dabbling into this affiliate space. Um, and while you were doing that, you became unemployed and decided, let me go full full blast with this um and you mentioned like your first store your first setup wasn't necessarily the right thing you kind of did everything kind of how nick and i did first started off with our business is like just doing it ugly just trying, Nine, to, just trying to figure it out as it go <laughs> yeah right um now did you come across um other people in the in the space that you kind of pulled from or was it just strictly trial by error the whole time i definitely tried to mimic other people. So there, there are people, you know, people that were ahead of me when I got started and now people are, you know, following along with what I'm doing. So a lot of folks do like case studies and stuff like that. So Pat Flynn did one, uh, circa 2013 and someone else named Spencer Hawes at niche pursuits. 
I followed along with his stuff very closely. So I think those two were sort of the primary people. And for many of the projects that people work on, especially with a case study style, they're usually very candid and transparent with what they're doing. They're often, I, I am not like that, by the way, I don't reveal my sites because typically those other folks like Pat Flynn or Spencer Hawes, they're selling other stuff. So they're, mm -hmm. they're making money elsewhere. So Got they're it. selling software, they're doing other affiliate deals, but I typically, you know, I'm earning money from the sites and I prefer not to reveal them. So some industries are way more secretive. A yeah, lot of yeah. affiliate marketers are, they kind of keep it close to the chest, kind of like drop shipping, some e-commerce folks do the same. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so, so traffic, traffic. Traffic. Yeah, that, like, that's, that was my question. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like where? So you know, you generating just, this from? Yeah, you, you just build a site, put it out there, and then you know. <laughs> sure. So one of the great skills that I learned along the way was SEO, and there's a couple different pieces. Wow. So you got the on on site SEO, which is around usually keyword research, and then how you structure the content, the kind of content you have on your site, and then off site SEO, which is typically you know, building links to the site, mm -hmm. some form of promotion out there. So for me, I actually developed a concept, sort of a keyword research method called the keyword golden ratio. It kind of gets in the weeds, but we could definitely like link up to it so people can see a demo. And then it makes a lot more sense than me verbally trying to explain a f math formula. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty easy, but basically it's like the supply and demand of keywords and keyword research so you could find low competition long tail keywords in a data driven way keyword golden ratio awesome so that that's what the the, the overall selling point is here with, with when someone you know hires you or, or uh, brings you on as like a consultant or, or, or um, to kind of help grow their business is that you already have your own methodology to to, to make it work and you, you have countless case studies of, of examples of that okay that makes a lot sure of sure and just to throw throw something in there i just give away all this information so you don't have to hire me you could just watch the youtube videos Man, I people. is there anything yeah i just it's all free you know go go get it it's up to you to implement hey, <laughs> one thing one thing we always say on this show is you know we can we can lead you to water but we can't make you drink what, how, how much easier can you get if someone's providing you all the methodology you need? Hustle, hustle sold separately, man. Hustle, hustle sold, sold separately. separately. That's a fact. <laughs> sure. um, man. Um, so like Doug, I mean, it's, it's a, the most, the most amazing thing about entrepreneurs is, is, is like stories like this to where like when you were working a corporate job, you weren't even thinking, you weren't even thinking about like uh, business or like entrepreneurship, but somehow you ended up on this path. Um, now you also teach and encourage other entrepreneurs to do the same. Is that correct? You're you have courses and you know in training yep. individuals. Um, yep. So what would you say, like somebody just starting out? I just signed up for your course today. Um, what is like a common misconception when I'm just now getting started? Like, are, are people like you know do they think it's a lot easier than it is? Do people not understand that the time requirements? You know, right. So great question. There's a couple angles that I'll mention here. So number okay. one, usually it took me a little while to figure this out, but you really, for your courses, you want to make sure you're getting in the right people. So I would do a lot of talking about how long and difficult and you have to be <laughs> persistent. So yeah. usually by the time people are enrolled in my course, they know there's a decent amount of work in here and it's not going to be overnight. So a lot of pre-filtering on my part. So usually people understand that. One, one interesting thing is I tell people they need to stop consuming so much information mm -hmm. and they think, well, yeah, maybe if I just keep consuming a couple things that are related to what you're teaching in the course, that'll be better. It's actually worse. This yeah. is like the curse of knowledge. And For unfortunately, sure. there are too many options. There's too many things that you can do. There's marketers like me and you know my peers and uh, potentially you guys, I'm not sure. I'm not signed up for your email list or anything yet, but yeah. <laughs> um, 
the thing is, um, we're trying to put sexy headlines in front of you. So you will work with us, you'll pay attention to us, but I want people to unsubscribe to email list. I tell them to stop watching YouTube videos, stop reading blog posts, stop podcasts, stop taking inputs in because it's going to confuse you, especially if it's the same topic area that we're looking at. So if you, if you're taking two courses at the same time and you try to implement them both, you're just going to be confused. You may be picking wrong, the wrong pieces and yeah. you've created a Frankenstein that is not going to work. So and actually, I would say, regardless, if you're taking a course, if you really want to do something, you got to focus and cut out all these inputs. I mean, I'm a very um, vocal uh, anti-social media person. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, I waste time on Instagram. I'm just like anybody else. But um, <laughs> the, the fact is, it's, it's just there to distract you. And so I yeah. stay out of Facebook groups. And if you can limit your inputs, you're going to be able to really curate what you're, what you're taking in. And you're probably going to have a better output. So no, that, that that's makes sense. Thing. It's it, it, it right when you said that, it kind of reminded me of, of, of like um, an analogy where you know, if someone trying to work on their like, you know, their jump shot in basketball, you, if you got to practice that one way a thousand times before you try to implement something else, because if you try two different ways to do the same kind of shot, you'll never, you know, get any of it down. You're just mm -hmm. constantly the muscle memory won't be there. So yeah. which is. And, and the thing is, so you're finding your own your own style too, right? If you got yeah. a jump shot, if you got a jump shot that worked for you, it works for you. And yeah. the problem is, is you're, you're, you're getting in all these sources and this person says, do it this way. This person mm -hmm. says, run ads this way. This person says, no, use the conversion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's so many different right. people out there. And, and there's, not, there's not just one way to do anything. There's, exactly. You know, people are successful doing it multiple, multiple ways. It's just narrowing down what works for you and just sticking to it and not getting Bingo. distracted, like, like Doug said. That, yeah. It's and um, speaking of success, um, how how have your have you had like um, any successful students or um, or yeah or like really successful students? You you care you know any success stories you'd like to share with us? Sure, a couple. I'm trying to think of the the freshest ones because you know over the years I've been fortunate enough to have like several folks that you know did great things and. A uh, couple, couple recent folks that use the keyword golden ratio to sort of tie it back to that keyword research method. There's a guy named Garav. I recently interviewed him on my YouTube channel and podcast, um, actually two interviews, but he bought a site in, I think the very beginning of the quarantine period in 2020. So let's say April of 2020. And with online assets, it's kind of a, it's an interesting investment vehicle and thing that you can get into because you could purchase it and then the value can drop pretty quickly. There's a lot of volatility. There's huge upside. So with that comes uh, some risk. So he actually bought a site and then it dropped in revenue by a pretty dramatic amount. I think it was like $200 a month down to about $50 a month. Mm. Then he published about 500 keyword golden ratio articles. He had some corporate skills to pull together teams as well. So mm -hmm. that's an interesting thing to add. So over the course of April until December of 2020, he published a lot of articles, did a lot of work on the site, lots of investment into the site. And then he pulled in over 10K in December. So that's wow. dramatic. That's, that's unusual. That is exceptional. Yeah. Most people don't have the skills to pull together a team and the resources to invest into that uh, content, but that's a fantastic example. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I had um, a person email me just the other day who she's blogged for, uh, I think like about three years or so, and she never really made much money. She's a, you know, I'm a working mom. She has a couple kids, limited time. She started using the keyword golden ratio in the last several weeks. And she's been able to make some sales. I think she's made like 20 bucks or something. So mm -hmm. it's the start yeah, of something cool. Win, yeah. And the fact is she wasn't getting any traction. It was just a hobby that took some money up until the point that she's earning money and she's been doing it for a few years. So the fact that she has momentum now is great. She's like, I can make money at this. I know that I need to you know, follow this method. And now yeah. she's pumped and excited, sort of uh, re reinvigorated for this uh, project. 
you, you spark that catalyst in her. So now it's now is like the where the where this thing kind of takes off. Um, so would you say there is um, like an ideal student that you would take on in terms of maybe they, what background they have already prior to getting into this? I think, you know, I could, I could do the smart thing and just say, yeah, you know what, everyone would be perfect to work with me. Right. But, you know, you do have to have some persistence. I think I run into a lot of folks that are into uh, like endurance sports. Mm, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, you work at it for a long time. You maybe don't see a lot of progress, but you're, you're in it because you enjoy the journey. So that, okay. that's part of it. Um, and then, you know, more specifically, writers seem to really crush it because they have the skill of understanding what good content is. They know what bad content is. They've potentially worked in the industry. So people that have a writing background, which I, I don't, I hated writing, by the way. <laughs> I have that engineering degree, math, science classes, failed out of English classes. So you could develop the skill, of course, but if someone's walking in and you were a writer or had that in your background, even if it was just enjoyment in those uh, so like lit classes or anything like that, you're probably going to have a leg up. Yeah. yeah. And then the other, the other set is, um, you know, engineer types. So those mm -hmm. probably it's the way that I've organized my content and information. So it's kind of targeted towards, uh, engineers. <laughs> and I mean, there's a lot of, there's spreadsheets and templates when I can, you know, throw those in there. Yeah. So in that content piece and the SEO piece, right? Like, so my understanding of SEO is that like with a blog, it takes like significant amount of time to like gain any traction for you know google to 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 read the content that's on the blog the particular blog so i'm thinking about that in terms of one of the one of the amazon affiliate review sites like it's this doesn't sound like something that like i could start today and begin making earning next week and is is, is that incorrect or you know does it take some time for the SEO to really pick up and you know the website to, to be around for a long time? It takes a little while. It's taken longer than it used to. So when I first started in 2013, mm -hmm. you could, you know, yeah. put a site up, you could be earning like thousands of dollars in a couple months. It was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And things shifted. Google has throttled that down so you can't get as much traffic as quickly. Mm -hmm you can earn some money in, you know, a shorter amount of time, still measured in weeks, but maybe it's going to be, you know, 10 or 12 weeks if you're really able to execute. And part of it is the keyword golden ratio. So you're, again, going back to the supply and demand, you're targeting keywords that maybe there's not any content on it. So if I were to make one up, again, stick into the TV, we'll say like best flat screen TV for basement workout room. So very specific, and you may think about that, like why would anyone care? But we're, we have a little workout space in our basement. We need a TV down there. So like that is actually top of mind for me these days. So some people do search for those kind of things. Maybe it's like an outdoor TV for your patio or something. Mm. If, you, uh, you know, if you're trying to have people over during quarantine times and you gotta be outside, maybe that makes sense. But if you go after those long tail keywords, it's more likely that you're the only thing on the internet that's answering that query. So you may be able to rank for it. Now, on average, it's probably gonna take, you know, several months for you to get a larger amount of traffic because most people are not like Garav who can publish, you know, 500 articles in six months or whatever he did. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. No, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense um, in terms of just preparing yourself for how long this like this kind of hustle takes yeah yeah um so so all in all at this point would you say that you know you're happy with the decision you made um when you came across that point in your time and got laid off and you kind of went full blown in this is, is this something you foresee yourself continuously doing or do you see yourself evolving to something else Sure. Yeah. I'm thrilled that I accidentally found the Smart Passive Income podcast because it definitely sent me down a path that I was not on before. And I 
love working for myself and having the autonomy to work on the things that I want to work on. And this is a completely, you know, sort of shift in our conversation, but I'm also interested in the financial independence uh, movement. Do you guys talk about that at all on the podcast? You guys into yeah, that? We actually, I saw you were on um, Cody's podcast as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We, we had, we had Cody on uh, one of our earlier episodes on season one. Yeah. Last yeah, season. Fly to fly. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm sort of like loosely interested in that stuff. And then as I've sort of like progressed down like affiliate marketing and, and some of the things after you work on some stuff for a while, it becomes a little routine and it's not as interesting and it's fun to work on new stuff. Yeah. And then the other part, I'm going to bring it all together. Don't worry. I moved to Longmont, Colorado and that is where Mr. Money Mustache is located. And he's a pretty big fixture in the FI community. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. people don't know what I'm talking about, you could Google it and you'll find a lot of information. You'll go down a rabbit hole perhaps. But as I've sort of progressed and have a podcast and YouTube, I'm like, I can work on some other stuff, you know, in that sort of FI track or um, I have options. I'll just put it that mm -hmm. way. I have some options. So I do see myself shifting to different areas that I'm just kind of interested in and maybe it's not purely to like make money or livelihood or anything like that, but it's like, this is an interesting project to work on. Maybe I'll get some great opportunities in the future out of this, which I mean, me starting niche type project as a blog has brought great opportunities that I couldn't have planned for at mm -hmm. all. And that's kind of the whole point of, of all of this is achieving financial freedom so that you yeah. can go down these different paths of just trying out different passions that you have or interests you have. And you're not yeah. stuck in that hamster wheel where you're so, like, Oh, I can't really try that because I got to wake up <laughs> for work tomorrow. So, so, so many, so many of our, our guests we've had on have, have brought up the financial freedom. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. Michelle Jackson brought it up. Yep. Um, we had Grant, Grant on. Yep. Yeah. We had Grant of millennial money. Um, oh, it was, nice. it, it was funny because he sold, he was on our show like a, like a few weeks just before he sold the website for like Boku money. Yeah. Like it was, and when we were talking to him, he kept saying, he was like, I have something special coming up, but like, yeah. reveal it. <laughs> and then like, we, we saw it on the news. Like, like, yeah, like we, oh. we, <laughs> we're like, ah, oh, no wonder he was smiling the whole time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that, and he was like, he was so like, he was like, I'm tired of talking about money. We're like, you're tired yeah, yeah, of talking yeah. about money. <laughs> <laughs> you have the millennial money podcast. And, but um, that I actually that that's an actually good good segue for something you 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 kind of touched on that I did want to bring back up is these websites like once they're up and running are you selling them because that's where I imagine like that's where like the serious money is is like you build up a site for like a year two years and you could sell that for like five sometimes maybe six figures. Yeah, yeah, and I was gonna say I've sold a couple uh, for six figures and it's lucrative, especially if you started from scratch. And I mean, you can build up these sites and grow them uh, relatively inexpensive for how much you can sell them for. So as like a, a ballpark, um, a lot of times business valuations are um, in the, you know, revenue or profit multiples. So a lot of times in the internet marketing and website world, we talk about monthly multiples. So mm -hmm. a lot of times it's between two and three years. So for a website, you would sell it for 30 times the monthly profit typically. So if the site's making $10,000 per month profit, mm -hmm. then you could sell it for 300,000. I made Especially the math easy for once. I usually yeah. give myself a <laughs> math no, Yeah, I was gonna say, you made that a lot easier than the, the numbers we usually see out there on, the, on these yeah. exchanges. But no, that makes sense. Especially when the, when the traffic is consistent, you can show that it's coming from like an organic place as opposed to like, you know, you know, paid traffic or something like that. Right, right. And, and a couple couple other things to mention along with that. So if you're earning from multiple sources, so let's say you're earning from Amazon, maybe you have some display ads, maybe you have some direct deals with companies that you're selling like their products uh, and you get an affiliate cut from them and it's outside of Amazon. So you have diversity in your revenue streams. It's probably worth more if you can show different traffic sources. So maybe you're getting some traffic from Google, maybe Pinterest, maybe a Facebook group or something on that end. If you could show that there's some diversity in different areas, the value is going to be higher. And 
it's, it's pretty impressive that, you know, you can start something from scratch. Maybe you put in, let's say a few hundred dollars in the domain, the initial website, and you're writing a lot of the content yourself. You really, I mean, you could sell it for, you know, six figures, mid six figures, high six figures. And it's, it's amazing once they kind of get <laughs> going, there's right. a lot of momentum. Now, Another business model, um, a friend of mine, he doesn't build any sites from scratch. He'll find some that are earning, say, between $100 and $1,000 per month. So he could pick them up for, say, under ten k or so. And then at that point, he has the skills to add content, build up the site. So he could buy it for, say, $5,000, work on it for six months or a year, and then sell it for tens of thousands. So pretty interesting just, business model. And just to... You know, for the audience who may be a little confused as to like, where are you buying and selling these websites? Yeah. There are platforms like that, that actually have like managed the entire exchange. Um, I mean, you obviously, you, I mean, obviously can reach out directly to a, a website or, uh, and, and see about purchasing it, purchasing it from them. But there are exchanges and platforms um, that are out there that allow you to, to buy it um, and sell your sites right on there. Um, we're not mentioning them directly because they haven't cut a check yet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they're out it, there. It, yeah. It, it, Doug did an interview. With, 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 <laughs> with, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, he might've cut Doug a check. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, that, that, that was something I, I think that was really important to mention is like that exit of like the whole game. Cause you don't want to run the sites forever. I mean, some, some you may, you know, especially like passion projects, but you know, you, you can, you can, you, you get out of these things and, you know, you can kind of get like a big time payday. Um, Doug, so um, one, one question uh, that we kind of like to always ask entrepreneurs when they come on the show um, is what is your hustle mantra? Um, your hustle mantra can be like a quote or a phrase or something that kind of embodies, you know, how you run your business or how you live your life. Um, if you have to give, if you had to give us what your hustle mantra, what, what, what would that be? I wish I could put it in, in a tight quote form, but I think it's really just enjoying what I'm working on. So I kind of alluded to it before where some, sometimes some of the things that I'm working on right now, it's a little routine and some topics that I've talked about a lot and I'm interested in sort of moving to other areas that I'm interested in and staying uh passionate and hungry to learn more. So it's probably in that learning more and uh, I guess be interested in what you're working on. So like I said, I wish I could put in the tight quote, I'm going to have to work on that, but that, that kind of embodies how I run the business and the projects that I'm like looking on the horizon that I'm going to work on. Stay hungry, stay hungry, stay, stay motivated, stay inspired. Um, I, I, I love that. I love, cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a believer. It's like, sometimes like people sit around and wait for inspiration to hit them, mm -hmm. but you can go out there and find it. Like stay, stay, try to inspire yourself, try to engage yourself. Um, and with that, like, would you say, like, would you, do you accredit any, any books in particular that have helped you like, you know, with your business? I or, really you know, kind of inspired you to be an entrepreneur. I'll mention a couple. I have a, a few behind me here. And one is Influenced by Robert, Robert Cialdini. A uh, great book on selling and marketing. And not just if you're selling and marketing stuff yourself, but it helps you understand if you're in someone's sales funnel too. So you can make hopefully better decisions and you don't yeah. fall into the, the trap and the yeah. quicksand yeah. there. Yeah. Have you guys read uh, influence. No, no, but that, that's an interesting concept though. Like looking at it as yourself in a funnel though. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So that's a great one. And then the other is uh, power of habit by Charles Duhigg and it's a fantastic book. I, I could get into some of the details, but the biggest takeaway and I'm, I'm doing dry January. So we're recording this is towards the end of January and I'm an <laughs> avid beer drinker got a kegerator. I have like pl plenty of drinks most of the time. <laughs> Ready and, to go. Yeah. And, and the thing is we're, we're doing dry January. It's great. I'm sleeping well. I'm happy that I'm doing it, but in the power of habit, Charles Duhigg describes the habit loop. 
and you have a, mm. a cue, you have a routine and yeah. you got a reward. Mm. And if you understand that and how to replace things, it's not too hard to, uh, you know, go from <laughs> drinking three, four beers a day, which is unhealthy. People don't do that, but <laughs> going from three to four beers a day to zero. And it was really not a big deal. So mm. it was like understanding what the cue was and what the routine was and kind of disrupting it and replacing that routine with something more healthy, like drinking a carbonated water or an herbal tea, and then just, you know, being satisfied with that. And I take it, you kind of apply that to your business uh, model as well. Yes, as, as much as, as much as possible. So when I identify certain things, like, you know, when you're running a blog and some other things, uh, email can get pretty hard to manage. And it's, kind of hard to gracefully do it. So sometimes I just have to realize, okay, I'm going to interrupt this habit loop here and we're going to maybe not answer emails super fast, or it took, you know, a little while for us to get this back on the schedule, but I, I did recover and <laughs> we're talking now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I mean, yeah, we all, we all, you know, it's, yeah, not, uh, we're not robots, <laughs> you know, we all, yeah, have uh, our ideals of what we should always be doing and your key your keystone off. habit right yeah. Doug? keystone that's habit. right you I got it. exactly yeah, yep power, power I, do, habit. <laughs> I do want to congratulate you on being the first guest to to, to drop two books that haven't been mentioned before yeah i think in every episode I've heard this. someone's mentioned a, 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 an, another book that's already been mentioned before like the most popular ones are like rich dad poor dad oh yeah uh the four hour work week um and there's another one. Uh, think and grow rich. Think and go rich. Yeah, those have been like the top three, like entrepreneur. Every like, episode. Every episode, someone brings it up. We're like, that's a ding. <laughs> and funny thing, uh, the think and grow rich. That's the. I couldn't get this. Is going to be super unpopular, but I couldn't do it. I started reading uh, it uh, and. Uh, uh, uh. It, like the books that I mentioned, it's backed mm -hmm. by uh, like studies and there's very solid information Data and then uh, napoleon hill is, is a little more uh, touchy-feely it's like anecdotal, anecdotes yeah yeah, yeah. well and you know like, what it's funny you say that because i kind of look at entrepreneurship the same way right mm -hmm. where it's like there's two school of thoughts there's like the emotional side of it where it's all just like you can do whatever you want just go out and do it there's nothing that can stop you and this other side is like data do you know how to do anything like how do you do yeah, yeah. that like what like, how do you get from point a to point b like you can't just tell yourself you're going to do it you got to do the research you got to actually you know figure out what yeah. You're doing. yeah well yeah and like uh i love seth godin love his podcast i have several of his books and he is kind of in that genre of like self-help slash business because he's not very exact he's like go out there create something good he does have a sexy haircut, like like we do, you know. Uh, so oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, you, can't, but, you can't get you can't get this anywhere else, baby. It's, it's the one on one. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> like the the COVID COVID special. So it's a good look. COVID it's special. Solid. Yeah. My COVID special is a hat, man. I, <laughs> I wear a hat in all these episodes. <laughs> yeah. Dog. All right, it took um, us off track, guys. Sorry. No. Yeah. No worries, man. There is um, no track. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think I think you you've really given us like an A to Z, you know, really unpacking of the entire well, at, le at least of the affiliate marketing space, um, Amazon affiliate marketing in particular, which is completely different from Amazon FBA. Just to, just to be clear, mm -hmm. um, are you working with any other affiliate platforms besides Amazon, or is it? Is it well, you said you are. Could you could you name a few? So a couple of the big ones out there is like share sale, commission junction, and share a sale. If, if you're if you're into like a specific product or, or genre or anything like that, then just search for the retailers and or the companies. A lot of times these folks will have an affiliate program set up somewhere, sometimes okay. that they're managing themselves. But if you have traffic on your site or you're, you know, interested in working with a company, you know, just reach out to them and see if they're willing to work with you. Cause the fact is, I mean, Amazon beats up the vendors. They, um, they don't pay as well as they used to, to us associates. So, so if you can work now. directly yeah. With a company, they're going to earn more, you're going to earn more. And then, you know, you're cutting out Amazon, which is, um, you know, a player that's going to squeeze people because they're so big.
Yeah, and so many people are trying to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Uh, Fees, are you familiar with any of those those companies? Those. Oh familiar? yeah, I, I'm, yeah. Those are all like you know the main big networks. I mean, there's Impact Radius. So you name it, Chair. Like you mentioned, Carousel. There's uh, yeah. Th- these are all like the the big um, platforms that mm-hmm. brands and advertisers generally go to because it's fairly simple for them. It's a whole different story on the publisher side of things, if you, but we'll, we'll get into that another time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Doug. Um, Doug, you you you've been you've been a great guest. I think you've you've given our audience a lot of a lot of information, mm-hmm. um, a lot of quality and uh, quality information at that, and a lot of value. So uh, we definitely appreciate you 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 talking to the Ninety Nine Hustle um, audience today. Um, you have a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, we want to give you an opportunity to talk about where they can find you, where they can find your blog, where they can find your YouTube, your podcast, and also, you know, if they might be interested in signing up in any of your uh, training or trainings or courses. Sure. So if you dig the podcast, um, you can go to Doug.show or search for Doug Cunnington on whatever podcast platform you like. And if you enjoy videos, you want to watch some of the tutorials, you could look up Doug Cunnington on YouTube. And then there's tons of videos. I think there's like over a thousand at this point. I do live streams every week, unless I'm on vacation or something. So you could pop in for that. And then I blog over a niche site project, which uh, funny enough, I'm going to be doing like a big content audit because I've been blogging there for seven years there's a lot of stuff that i need to sort of pare down so there's <laughs> going to be there's going to be some cleaning happening over at niche site project but yeah you can pick your poison whatever you want to uh, connect to, with me on uh, i'm out there perfect perfect well and that's a wrap for this week's episode uh thanks for listening to the nine and hustle podcast be sure to visit nine on hustle.com to join the conversation access the show notes and discover our amazing bonus content. Please, uh, please rate review and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this episode, um, always remember there's 99 hustles. All you got to do is choose one, choose one.